which is actually it's a pretty big deal because we can rank sites without even links using social profiles. Uh, so let's get right into it. What's coming up for you today? Of course, I'm going to go over the same seven steps I've been going over. We'll just do a, a quick, quick review. And then we're going to go into step two. We're going to go into creating social profiles, why we do this, and a little bit of history about it, where we do this, how we do this, and then the path. Because then we're going to go into a case study that Ann did that we showed uh, on some of the other webinars, but we're going to go into detail how she built uh, Seal Beach SEO and how she ranked uh, profile sites without any links at all. And then we have a surprise, too, because the main site is now linking on page one where it wasn't during the launch, and we're going to show you how we did that. Okay, so process map. Here is the process map for the seven-step SEO. Uh, you can, I also have that in the handouts like I did last time. Also in the handouts section, and you can get that on your GoToWebinar control panel uh, that you should be able to see, and it's one of the, one of the things that says handouts. I also put the slides up here this time, and I also put another process map that says step two that we'll go over. So there's three, there's three handouts there that you can download when you have a chance. And of course, they will be uploaded into the members area uh, as soon as the recording gets done after this. And okay, so that's the process map. We've gone through that in step one. Here are the steps, of course, buying an age domain that we went over last week. Create social profiles for it, and this is what we're going to do this week. And then choose your keywords, study your competition, create a baseline, develop your pages, and get links and off-site SEO. So today we are going into step two, creating social profiles for your money site. And actually, you know, um, you can create social profiles for your PBNs too, and I would recommend it for you newbies who don't understand what I just said. That's okay, but for you advanced people. Definitely, uh, and you're going to see the power of this and why it would create one of your, uh, give you more power to a PBM. Uh, one you know what, and, your... and before, before you go ahead, I just want to tell you that we have 70 people so far that have logged in, and I just want to give a shout out to Jake Obina, and I want to say, hey, I know that you've reached out to me and we've missed each other. Your artwork is absolutely fabulous. And uh, eventually we will connect, just keep trying. And I wanted to say hi to Maria too because we've had a couple of, of conversations. And Dory, remember last uh, week when you did this, you found somebody, Dory O'Neill, with your same spelling? She's yeah, she's today. here again. <laughs> she's here again too. And so everybody's saying hi, hi, Lewis, hi, just everybody, hello. And, and just remember, I will interrupt. Dory has a tendency to talk fast. And we only have a um, uh, an hour to be with you, so she puts her process maps up. So as we're going through, uh, just um, if you have questions and you put them in where you guys are saying hi again, all of that, we're, we're going to try and get that. And those who want to stay on after we kind of go to the end, we will be answering questions. So. Uh, just wanted to butt in there and and slow that down so everybody knows how we're going to handle that just like last time. Yep, and Benny, yes, I am in Ione, California, and it was 104 here yesterday. I don't know what the degrees is today. I've not gone outside. <laughs> I'm working on my presentation. Anyway, okay, let's go. Uh, step two, social profiles. Why is it really necessary? And, you know, it's not absolutely necessary, but this is going to give you and your site legitimacy. And this really, really helps. It gives you citations, it gives you backlinks, which build, of course, authority. So again, you turn, you can go from this without it, or you can be a muscle guy like this, just like last time, you know, from buying a new domain to an age domain. It's the same type of thing. So this is going to strengthen everything else you do. And once we go through this, I just think really... that it's hilarious that you're going showing the guy's abs. And just for the record, Dory, one of these days, one of these days, you're gonna, you've met that guy. Remember, Dr. Charles, you've met that guy with those abs. That's Dr. Charles. <laughs> no, but he, his body looks just like that. Oh yeah, I know that. There's a lot of guys in our industry that have bodies like that. But uh, wow, it's 
so that's kind of would be kind of weird if I actually picked somebody that I knew. Um, in any case, here is the process map: getting social profiles and linking to them. And here are the big threes: uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Google. And these are the ones that Anne used to rank uh, all those properties for Seal Beach SEO without any links. And I'm going to get a little past myself, and so we'll come back to this at the end, and this is going to make more sense because we're going to go into this, uh, every step of this individually. Once you set up your full profiles, then you link to those profiles with a public blog network like what we have for you. And that's what starts really boosting your, uh, your site and ranks your money site. And it was that process that Ann started after our launch, which has ranked our money site now on page one. So that is the process map that you can uh, download. So history of step two. Now, before we had social platforms, like, you know, I've been doing this since 201, and social platforms were not all, always available. And we used to say, you know, submit your site to the directory. So step two used to say submit your site to directories. So if you ever see an old process map of mine, it'll say instead of profiles, submit your site to directories. And it did basically the same type of thing. Uh, it gave your site authority because, you know, the directories at that time had authority and when you got links from them, they were really powerful. That is no longer the case. I wouldn't go out to any directories except for DMOZ or some really specific ones that you pay for, Yahoo or anything like that. But basically, in, in, in a generalization, in a step process, you know, one through seven, step two is about creating now those type of uh, quick, powerful links from, you know, our social media. Um, so that is one of the things that have changed. So, you know, where do we go get them? Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Yext, Yelp, Twitter, YouTube, Google+. Plus. Um, and what we do is we link to them from our money site, and then we get links from them. So it kind of goes both ways, and that's what's really powerful about it. And why would that be? Uh, why would linking to them become a powerful asset? Well, you know, it does make your site look more legitimate. Most businesses are going to be linking to their uh, profiles. So here in Seal Beach SEO, we can see on the About page and some of the other pages, Anne's linking to all of her, you know, on the right-hand side, these are all the sites, uh, her social sites that they're, uh, she's linking to. And some of these I've never even heard of. You know, I am not a local SEO expert, and you're going to get all of that from EROC coming up. Um, so uh, we're going to concentrate on Google Plus and Facebook uh, and actually YouTube, which I don't see right here, but it is in the mix anyway. Um, but linking out to them just makes your site look legitimate. Why wouldn't you? Uh, it, it is natural to link out to authority sites, and these are the authority sites. So if you had a, a, a website, a business online, of course you'd be linking to your social profiles. So it's important to link to your social profiles. Now, what's really going to boost you is linking from them to your main site or to your money site. Same thing. When we say main site or money site, it, it's exactly the same thing. So why does this help? Well, of course, you're getting links from authority sites, which, turn, which turns your site into an authority site and gives you, once again, that legitimacy that Google is looking for. They're looking to be able to trust your site. And the best way right now, really you know, quickly, uh, that's why it's in step two, is to start this process. Uh, you know, getting these things, building these things. And, you know, these things are not hard to do. You can go into Fiverr and have people build out uh, your profiles. And uh, Dory, you. Dory. Yes? Is you having your black cat. I'm going to say do not go to Fiverr and have them build this out. Everybody needs to learn how to do this until you're really comfortable. Okay, what I'm saying is a lot of people get uh, tripped up with the artwork and things like that. I wasn't, I, w <laughs> I hadn't gone into getting links or anything like that, Black Hat, yet. It well, that's legitimate but to have still, somebody but on still, Fiverr. I know, but still, but, I know you, and you would, if you had a site that wasn't a money site, you would tell, you would go to Fiverr and say, build out these profiles. It's just who you are. Yes, I would. And, I uh, and then I would go in and finesse them how I wanted to, but I would, yeah. of course, try to outsource as much as I can and you cannot you know it is absolutely unbelievable the amount 
and different varieties of work that you can get done on Fiverr. You know what? I, I mean, I'm not even going to go down that pig trail right now. Let's just stay focused on yeah, this. But Fiverr is a great resource, even for white hat stuff. So yes. anyway, getting links from these social profiles gives you instant credibility. Um, there is an automation tool for another black hat thing that, and I don't know if Ann used or not, but it's called Social Adder. A lot of people do use Social Adder. Uh, it comes, you know, you get links from other social accounts. Uh, it, it, it is, a lot of people use it, just putting it out there, you know, uh, actually it'd probably be a good thing for PBNs and stuff like that. Uh, here's my thing that I said on Fiverr, yes, you can find people to set up your profiles and create artwork for you, because a lot of people have a hard time doing artwork and videos, I mean, they really white hat stuff, so it's not all about, you know, going to Fiverr and buying likes or links or anything like that, it's actually having them do the work. Uh, some of the stuff that may trip you up, you know. So ranking with just social. Um, we did this, and the example was Seal Beach SEO. I gave Ann two weeks to do this, you know, before the launch. I said, you know what, it's great if we could just, you know, uh, have an example, like 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 a case study that we're in process with. And so she had those. She had four listings ranking within that time frame. Um, but as if you can remember, if you were listening to one of those main uh, webinars that we did, the main site hadn't gotten to page one yet. Uh, but now, from the help of backlinks and the profiles that we created, it is on page one. So this was our local domination that happened in two to three weeks, uh, and got this site ranking for Seal Beach SEO and a lot of other keywords too. That are a um, variety of those keywords like Seal Beach. Uh, SEO services, things like that. You know, just you just don't get one keyword when you're doing this kind of stuff. You get a multiple array of keywords. But this is the one that we're focusing on right now. So she got she had four listings on the on the first page on page one. The Yelp was up there. The site was in the maps. Uh, the Facebook was actually down a little bit lower, and YouTube was down a little bit lower. Um, so all of those, all of those were ranking without any links. And here we are. We were still on. Page two, and we were, well, it looked like we were uh, 11, 12, 13, and then 15, 13, 14, 15, yep, on page two. Now I'm really happy to say uh, since we've done our linking and we've, we actually didn't link to the main site, we've just linked to the profiles that has pushed our main site up to, on page one, and it is now the second result on page one. Our, the first result is our Facebook page, um, which is absolutely incredible. The second result on this page is our maps listing. The third result is our main site. The fourth result is the Yelp site. And the fifth result is the YouTube. Now, this all started from just getting links from these profiles and then linking to these profiles. That's how, that's how much getting profiles can strengthen any site. Now, we're talking about a local site, so yes, it's a little bit easier. But just imagine, you could do this for any keyword, really. Uh, uh, maybe not the, the maps thing, but, the, but the, the principle is the same. I'm just using this as an example. So look, let's look exactly at what Anne did. Um, she did buy a domain, and she chose to buy an exact match domain, which is D. So that goes hey, Dory, I, yeah. I just I'm going to interrupt really quick, and I want to want to say now I know that everybody is uh, in a places. So whether let's say you're in Philadelphia and you look that up, or you're Dory's Dory's showing her screen and she's in Northern California, in Ione. So when she takes her screenshots, I just want everybody to know that it may look a little different. Remember, um, when you're looking for a keyword or a key term, because a lot of this we went over when, you know, because you guys watched me do this before any of it ranked in my in the actual course that I did, I want you to know that 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 if you go and you search for Seal Beach SEO and we're not in those positions or it's varied a little bit, just know it's it's how Google's going to return the results based on where you are. Just yeah, and, and what data center? The, uh, Google has yeah. data centers that they pull information from, which yeah. is kind of an advanced thing. But yes, it varies. And yes, and th but that's what it was for me in Northern California. Uh, Anna is in Southern California. We're about 400 miles away from each other, and that's what the results were for me today. Um, 
so let's talk a little bit about the domain. So I typically will say buy an expired domain. Uh, I'm really all into that. And even if you were going to buy a brand or something like that, I still like the fact you know that you can buy an expired domain or ex buy one and do a re or redirect. She didn't do that on this one. She bought an exact match domain, which we call an EMD. And what that is is that's the exact uh, keyword that she wants to rank for is Steel Beach SEO. So that's what she did, which was a really good um, tactic. Although I don't want you to think that buying a bunch of exact match domains is going to rank you for everything everywhere. Doing that alone, it's not going to get you there anymore. Um, you still, you've got to make it a real site. They done a, a, an exact match domain, an EMD update, where if somebody just had the, the exact match domain and nothing surrounding it that made it legit, uh, they all went down. So you really have to do that. But when you do that, it does give you a little boost. So if you were doing um, uh, uh, some stuff like Greg Montoya, renting sites, wanting to rank for local uh, terms, if maybe you're a business, maybe you're a dentist, you know, Steel Beach Dentist, uh, Steel Beach Plumber or Sacramento Plumber, something like that. That those kind of things are ideal, and you can all, you know, you can do that in addition to ranking you know, another property. I mean, you could you could do what we are doing here if you're doing local and then another local, you know, your, your main site. But I'm not going to, I don't want to get too much down that path because EROC is, is going to have a huge module on, on local and I want, I, and, I, and God, I can't wait till that's released because it's really, really powerful. Anyway, so she bought an exact match domain. And then what she did was she created a Facebook page, a Google Plus page, a YouTube channel, and a Yelp page, but uh, the Yelp pages was be because it was a local business. Uh, we're not going to go into that, but we are going to go into detail into the Facebook, Google Plus, and YouTube channel and how that works all together to create this unstoppable force that has dominated page one for that term. So let's look at Facebook. Let's look at what she did here, the fan page. And what I want you to note is that you have to have 25 likes before you can switch the number Facebook assigns you, you know, it's like face, Facebook slash the number to uh, slash keyword. So you can see here on the presentation, it says, so Facebook.com slash, you know, 12837H893. You know, you have to get 25 likes, and of course you can get those from your friends and family. Uh, and let's say do not buy them. And I would say, hey, go ahead. But, uh, you know, this, you know, that's the white hat versus black hat of our personalities. Um, so then finally, when she got 25 likes, her Facebook.com became uh, uh, Seal Beach SEO. And so now this is what it looks like when you search for it. It's Facebook.com slash Seal Beach SEO, which is a perfect uh, keyword. You know, it, it, uh, um, Google's loving the key, keywords in the URL right now as long as you don't over-optimize them in the page. It really is a, a good thing. Sure. And you and you when you go there, you know sometimes it's not always available, so you have to look at what it is. And so I, I sometimes look at that before I even choose the domain name. Look to see what's available in Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could put you could have put Seal Beach Ser SEO Services if Seal Beach SEO wasn't available, or Seal Beach Search Engine Optimization, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, here's what's really cool about the about page on Facebook. You know, if you put a map in with the page info and you do it the exact way all the way down, everything you do in local and your citations has to be all the same, and that's very important, but I'm not going to get into that. But what I am going to show you right here is that right on this right hand side, that's a link that goes to the main site from Facebook. And it actually ends up showing on the uh, Facebook page right here. So, so when you put it in the About section, it creates an About link, and it goes straight to the money site. So there you go, linking from Facebook to your money site. Incredibly, incredibly powerful. Uh, so love that. The photos that she created. Um, she created an album with the keyword, you know, hashtag SEO, hashtag Seal Beach. And the photos automatically links back to your main Facebook page, which absolutely helps your listing. So even though they're not 
uh, linking out to your main site. They're linking back to your Facebook main page, your home page, and that gives another boost. It's like that really great internal linking that Google loves so much. So that is another really big bonus when you do your photos, and it automatically links back to your main page. So we want you to do that. So here are the two photos that Ann put in and had hash, hashtag keyword, hashtag keyword, stuff like that. And it also helped her to rank for images. So here we're, you know, here I just have three rows. She's ranking for one, two, three, four, five places uh, in the images. And you may say, well, nobody's going to go to the images on local search. And you're probably right. Nobody probably will. But there's other types of keywords that people will. There's other type of keywords that show images in the uh, on the first page. So that's just something good to know, something that social um, linking from your social profiles helps with. So that's just an added bonus, you know, right there, even though for Seal Beach, I don't know if anybody would be good looking for images on Seal Beach SEO. Posting. So you wait, wait, wait. Let me let me slow let me slow you down really quick. There are some people that are asking some some quick questions, and I just want to say, um, even the the main thing I want to just address is even if you're not local, why this is important. If you have an Amazon page or you have um, you're wanting to rank for a Facebook page, that's how you're doing your offer. Or you're one you're not in a local business. You're wanting to rank for a national keyword. Per se, you these these techniques will still assist you in achieving those goals, even if it's not local. Yeah, I thought I made that uh, plain in the beginning. So let's just emphasize that we are just using this sample, this case study, because we have it, and it's one that we will reveal. There's not too many other things that we will publicly reveal. Uh, this and my gourmet olive oil, we're kind of like, okay, Google, here we have, here we've done it, you know. So we are using, we're going to use uh, uh, those two sites as much as we possibly can. But Anne's right, you can use this for anything. This is just a basic get guideline to why you would want social profiles, even if you don't, you aren't doing local SEO. It's for any keyword, anything. Amazon, oh my God, heck yeah. Amazon pages, ranking Amazon pages, it just, just really, really helps and is really, really powerful. Now, so you create these things, and you know, Anne posts on her Facebook page every day. It makes it look like a real site. There's branding that's going on, linking back simultaneously. So, if you had even you know an Amazon page, an Amazon product that you're trying to rank, of course you'd want to post stuff that is that that is related to that. So, you know, I could be doing uh, my olive olive oil stuff. So it's just part of the uh, daily keep up of it, um, which you know is what you. We'll probably be doing anyway with a money site because creating profile engagement helps you on so many different levels if it's a real business that I can't even go into that. Right now, we're just talking about the SEO value of it. I mean, there's the whole social media signal everything value of that as well and producing a targeted traffic for you. Right now, all I'm talking about is the search engine optimi optimization um, benefit of using social profiles to link to your main site. So I hope that's perfectly clear there. So what we've built now, we just went over the Facebook page. Let's go over the Google Plus page now that she built. So well, she verified it as a local business. Uh, they send you something in the mail. You get a shield. It helps your, you know, and your man your map rankings. And you know, it just it just makes sure you're regular, like you're legit and you're real. And I'm not going to go into that. That was just because this is a local site. and We want to stay away from that local stuff. So building it up though um, about us. When we set it up, she linked to the map. She linked to the website and more links, more pages, keywords into you know into internal pages and local links. So let's go see what that looks like. So here we go, the about page. This is on Google Plus. We have a link uh, that goes out to the main site on the map and all kinds of different things. And maybe you want to talk about a little bit more about Google Plus. I'm not a, much of a Google Pluser and what is going on on this page. And there's a lot of great uh, additional local keywords that you can be ranking for because of what you're doing in here. Yeah, and well, the links that you're getting. Yeah, so in essence, um, when we started, you know, 
to own a page, it, it has to be more than your website. There's, there's more than 10 sites, and so we went for some of the big ones. So uh, the first thing that I want to say is, of course, I've got the URL in there. Um, and then where it says nestled between, these are areas, so Belmont Shores, Los Alamitos, Sunset Beach, those are neighborhoods that uh, Seal Beach SEO can service. And then search engine optimization services is an LSI term for SEO. So we linked Seal Beach, I mean, search engine optimization services to Seal Beach SEO. And at the bottom, you can see a contact us, which is another link to the website. So imagine within Google, on this one page of Google Plus, I'm linking to the website three times. I'm linking to authority sites, like city sites, three times. Plus, I'm able to, to put the, the URL, and I changed it to Seal Beach SEO Services, which is also an internal page because I couldn't get Seal Beach SEO. It wasn't available. And then when she's pointing to links, we have those linking. And I want, I want to say this because I'm seeing lots of things come up in the, in the, in the questions, so we'll answer just a few of those really quickly. Naming convention is imperative, but naming convention, when we talk about the NAP, N-A-P, we're talking about the name of your company, your address, your phone number, and your URL. So I would have loved to have Seal Beach SEO, and I love how Nathan said, hey, if your business name is Joe the Plumber, would you still call your Facebook page facebook.com Seal Beach Plumber? I thought we should keep naming consistently. If I can, I do. If I can't, I don't. But I always keep my NAP address correct. The links on here are very important because I'm not just linking with just bogus keywords. I'm real. It look. It is very real. It's a real site. Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, about the maps too. Here's another great place to get a link from Google, especially if you're doing a, you know local SEO. So you could <laughs> black hatly create a maps, create a business but with a keyword type of thing and do this kind of stuff. Uh, 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 I, White Hat Ann wouldn't tell you about that, but I would. Um, I mean, getting links from Google itself, you know, it, it, don't you think Google loves that when they see that they're giving your, your site links? It's, I, I can't even tell you how powerful this is. So I, I'm just really hoping and praying that people are looking at this, the, the local scope of this case study that we're showing you right now, that this kind of stuff can be done with any keyword uh, in any niche. So that's just another place links from that directly from Google. Here's another one, another link from Google going to the YouTube channel. So here in they, you know Google Plus has a YouTube um, chat, you know a little YouTube tab because of course they own YouTube. So getting a link from something else that they own is really really awesome. So it links to your YouTube channel. So why would that be important? Linking to your YouTube channel from a Google Plus page. Well, it makes your YouTube channel that much more powerful. So it's going to be uh, easier to rank the video that is on that YouTube channel. And then when you're linking from that YouTube channel to your money site, it just spreads that juice, that Google juice, and it works beautifully. So we just went through uh, the Facebook page and the Google Plus page. Let's look at the YouTube channel and the video now. So Seal Beach SEO channel. You, here I go again. You can have someone on Fiverr do it. Uh, put a video in it and then put the backlink in your site description. So here is Seal Beach SEO's channel. Uh, you can do this for any keyword, anything. And this is a video that's you know one minute long. Uh, it that I, and did you you said you had you you know it just has uh, uh, uncopywritten music and it's just yeah, I'll tell you words what, on I'm slides. Gonna, I mean I'm just going to tell you what I did. I mean this is so I can't even tell you how easy this is. So what I did is be from the website that I had written 
and I put them on slides and I just played music and that's it there's no talking there's no people it's just pictures I mean yeah. I didn't have a lot of time it was uploaded one month ago guys it's only had 75 views I mean the point is is that if somebody looks for that that's where it's gonna be and yeah. you know I've got a lot of questions about different things and I just want to tell everybody we will be answering these questions yeah yeah we're gonna have a lot of time for that um, so what she did not do and could have done and what I always do in my videos is put a link here right in the description the first part of the description to my money site Google loves links from YouTube so that would have been a perfect place so even though she didn't do this she still took over page one uh, for this keyword so um, ranking with just social so again it works for everything and this is the step two of the seven step process so now I think this might make a little bit more sense to you the process map so we just went from YouTube and YouTube we had a link going from YouTube to the money site um, we have a link going from Facebook to the money site we have a link or multiple links going from uh, Google Plus to the money site then we also have a link from, you know, from Google Plus going to YouTube uh, we have a link going from Google Plus to Facebook and then a, you know a, a link from Facebook going to YouTube and you can kind of see this is a, a, a it's like in the olden days we used to create a link link wheels and stuff mini nets it's kind of almost like that although it's legitimate all natural is what it, it's what Google's looking for and it works really really well and that's why it is now it's more powerful than the step two that uh, I had previously had which was submitting to the directories uh, five six years ago so this is much more powerful and then when we started when and started linking from a public blog network uh, to these channels not to the group to, to the money site so it makes it clean it makes these these profiles buffer sites just you know and, and that's how it started boosting the money site and that's how the money site finally uh, came up on not finally after four weeks uh, it, it uh, came up on page one um, actually we didn't start linking to you didn't start linking to the p to profiles till after the launch so this might have happened within the last seven days right or the last two weeks definitely the last uh, two weeks yeah okay because we were because it's an exact match domain and I mean as I as I was even making the the courses the finishing the course up we didn't have the page wasn't ranking you know so it definitely is recent yeah yeah so this this system right here you know and if you combined it with a, getting an age domain in a niche uh, is, is really incredibly powerful and um, I think we've explained it better than I've ever seen it explained um, and with the case study that we're able to show I almost feel like choosing a keyword and doing this just so we can get it out of local you know so people have a, a better idea of just how powerful step two is and um, this in a okay let's look end of, of the, the step two presentation before we start answering questions this is an advanced version of that and it's a SEO social syndication for you advanced advanced guys if you got if this is going over your head don't worry uh, you don't even need to do this I mean because you saw what kind of results we got but if you took your feeds from these uh, social sites or you know uh, web 2.0 sites and you know the RSS feeds and you mashed them together and then put that mash into a link network and then those links went out to back to your social sites that are connected to your money site that's kind of like social syndication on steroids uh, really 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 hits it hard and that's probably something we'll go well, we'll go back into in the advanced section when we start into advanced linking but since it was in you know it was in social I kind of wanted to put it put it in here because it's almost the same type of idea but it's taking your feeds 
and and spreading them out because when you embed YouTube you know videos and when you get shares it, it all helps so that's kind of like an advanced thing I know some of you probably understand that most of you probably don't and that's okay so let's just go back to uh, our slide uh, that is the base whoops, uh, previous and we can either talk more about that or we can go onto the internet and Anne can go you in and show you in detail other things that she done she did to the site because what uh, there's other things too about the site and that's just about general SEO uh, that I really liked is the, her interlinking that she was doing in the site that I always want to you know we'll probably get into that well we will get into that more when we do on page optimization and step six but uh, it's just it's it, it, it just nice things to see when you see it that, that I want to point out along the way because I think um, sometimes you have to hear things seven times before it registers. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go get a sip of water and if you want to start taking some questions, I'll be right back and maybe I can read them out to you as well. Actually, um, I, think, I think I've got enough here that I can really kind of, you know, just kind of drive. Go get some water and when you come back, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it going. Okay, awesome. I'll be right back. Okay. Listen, guys, I've I've got I've got only a few questions left, so so hold off on typing them in really quick, and I'm going to hit some, um, and just kind of knock these out pretty quick. Adam, you know, you're asking regarding linking to an Amazon product page. Are we linking social sites to canonical URLs? Plus, if we change the product title in Amazon, the canonical changes. So we do we lose those links? So. I want to hit that first because I don't know how many Amazon people we have here, but I want to address that. So Amazon will create a redirect is how I think they do it, but remember when you're linking to a page within Amazon, you're actually using your number. So it's a super URL that you're linking to, so hopefully you've got your product number in there. So your product number is what you really need to, to care about. And when you change it, did you lose all those links? I think that Amazon handles that internally. I would have to do a study to know that, but I want to clearly something cool about Amazon, and I have a product up on Amazon, and I don't know if you know this, Adam, but as you get, you're, you're talking about the URL there on your title. There's also a way to link to reviews and images. So it, every single time you get a review, it's got its own URL. So that's another place to link to. Ginny. Some of us are not doing local business case. We can do the main socials, right? I don't really understand the question, but again, if you're not doing local business, it's the concept that's important here. It's the concept to understand because when Dory releases her public, her PBN, it's a public network. You don't want to link to your main site. So if you have these other sites that are already in authority, and you can link to those, you're going to start knocking it out of the park. SJ, where did you put the hashtag keyword? Is there a field for this? I think you're talking about that in um, the pictures on Google+. And yes, I just put it in. So when you go there, if you build that, you'll see how to do that. And Erock talks about that some more. When he gets into that, what does the hashtag mean? So I'm a, I'm a Twitter person, so... Uh, there's actually there's ways to even follow hashtags and all it does is it's kind of say hey this goes into this category so the number sign before that it's just a hashtag like so I went out to, to see a comedian the other night and my friend posted that I was with her and she posted a hashtag Anna V kicked ass I mean no what kind of hashtag is that but all of those that know Anna that was awesome she just created her own hashtag. SJ, you also said, is there a way to automate the daily posting for Facebook? So my agency has an agency agreement with Hootsuite. We're also looking at uh, Edgar. There are, um, you know, many places that you can automate posting for Facebook, Twitter, all of those things. It's how you upload it. And there's a way to do it that it will post to all of them based on the time you want. But I, I want to say it's not that that's advanced, it's that, it's that it costs money. And there are some free tools that do that also. So business, I just suggest you get a, you get a few of these so that you can manage that yourself. 
uh, and what do you talk about in your post and how do you mash your feeds. So I talk about in my posts, I always try to be relevant to the topic. So that's my goal as I try to be relevant to the topic. That's the simplest way to do that. And how do you mash your feeds? Dory will get into that, but in the in the short version, let's just say um, you it's imagine a pipe and everything comes through a pipe and it pushes onto your site. And Justin talks about that in we released to social course and he talks about making things viral that way and I'm waiting to get an email back from him because he's got a viral plug-in that kind of does that automatically it's pretty cool and he's given that away I just don't he I need to find out exactly where to send everybody so we'll send a link out for that um, Andrew Hall what is the the advantage to using dub 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 when displaying the URL to your social media profiles I wouldn't say that that there's an advantage to using that those of you who know me, I always use the fully qualified URL when I can. I would always use the HTTP colon whack whack www dot your domain name dot com. However, when I can't use the HTTP colon whack whack, I always use the www. Except when I'm link building, because some people will just put in Seal Beach SEO. Some people will put in www dot Seal Beach SEO. Some people will go search and put seal space beach space SEO. So when I link build, I want to link build to all of them. I hope that's clear. In the back end, when you build your site, I show how in Google Webmaster Tools you want to make your www um, and your non www appear as one site to Google. If you did not do that, Google will see that as two sites. Kathy Lane. I don't know who you are, but I like you. You ask tons of questions. So I'm going to try and hit these really quick. If you want to rank an Amazon book, would you link to your Amazon URL? Yes, I would. Amazon is different. So if Amazon is your money page, I would link directly to that and also to social sites that link to that. Those of you who have done ASM, they teach you how to, uh, like if you have a Pinterest page or you have a Twitter page, they teach you how to build links to that and to have people go in and, and comment on that. Um, what would be the best way to get your post to go viral for a particular keyword? Oh my god, there's so many ways to, to skin that cat, but that's what Justin's talking about specifically. So I hope if you haven't taken his course yet this week that you guys go and take a look at that. If you're selling a book on Amazon, would you consider Amazon as the money site? My answer to that would be Yes, I would consider Amazon as the money site. If you sell a product, how would you create a Google Plus page? Now, this is a good question for social. Beside, is it a product that a brand? For example, Nike has a page, but Nike has a million different types of shoes. So you have to decide what it is that you want to do and how many of those you want to support. I have a friend who makes probably, I don't know, 80 grand, 90 grand a month. He has made, he has done this process that I just, that Dory just showed you for, um, for local. He's done this whole process, the linking and everything for each individual product. I can't tell you, say, hey, do it this way or do it that way, but you would create a Google Plus page as if, and whatever address you use, that becomes the address for every single thing about that product. Next question, you were still from Kathy. You were using a Google way to identi identify a keyword. I'm not using it as a way to identify a key keyword. I I have um, I rank for several different keywords for that website. We were showing you how I chose that. I chose an exact match domain. So I want it to kind of match that to be as, as um, maybe transparent as possible. Uh, she says, I'm a little confused on what your Google Plus page is actually describing, identifying. So I, I'm just using that as the company. So the company is Seal Beach SEO. I'm branding that all the way through. How could you use other people's videos to rank your site? So. I want to share with you, normally you don't, but 
I did test something. Uh, I did tell you that I have a video, I mean, I, I have a product on Amazon. And what I did is I cannot, I'm number one, I mean, I'm number two position on videos, on my little video test. But somebody else ranks on page one for the video for best blank review. So I was like, oh my God. So I called her and I asked her, would she, if I sent her free product, would she do a review for me? And she did. Now I'm still outranking her on YouTube for that video that she made, but she's still outranking me. But now if somebody goes to her page, they're going to see that she did a review for my product. So I just want to tell you, it's just something that I did. The, the chick said, yes, it worked out well for me. Okay, I'm trying to, so many questions. Um, link to your site. Do you have a process map for other social media sites? LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram. So I personally, when I did my initial course, did not go into those because each of those tell you how to do it. There's a how-to for each of those. Every social media platform has a way to build that platform. When Erock does his local, he will touch on the main ones and he will talk about that and Justin talks about those in his course. The public blog network, is this your PBN we're going to use as the PBN? So the public PBN can be private blog network or public blog network. In the end, Dory's going to give everybody access to create your own private blog network. And a private blog network means you're in charge of all the links, all the content, all the domains, how it works. A public blog network, which is what Dory is building to release for everybody to do 500 sites, I never link to a real website from a public blog network, ever. I never link from there. I cannot stress that enough. Now Dory does sometimes. I never do it. I always link to a thing like YouTube that links to me or to Facebook. So that's on the public blog network and yes she will show that. Nathan G. If your business name is Joe the Plumber, oh I already answered that one. Lewis, how do you use the map in Facebook if your site is not local? Now Lewis, that is a great question. So you have to ask yourself do you want to, you, I mean, you don't have to fill it out, but let's just say that, that your site is not local, but your business has an address. For example, I, my agency has a company and they have a local place in California, but from an SEO standpoint, they get people from all over the world to come to them. So wherever their local business is, that's what they do as a map so that they, they put energy to rank locally meaning their catchment area within like 50 miles from where they are and then they do things to rank outside of that area. I hope I hit that for you Lewis. Sarah, I start do I now create a Facebook page with the same name? Are you going to make this page available to us for a reference? Dory, when you come back you're going to have to answer that because I don't oh, I'm know. Back. How... What was that again? Are, 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 uh, are you going to make this, like, what, what we're looking at now, is that one of the process maps on the right? Yeah, that they can download in the handouts. I made it and created a PDF out of it. You're such an artist. Thank you. So, so Sarah, it's there to download right now under handouts-3. Should you create a Facebook page with the same name? I don't know what you're really looking at. And I, I don't want to, I would say try to have it match your URL to the best of your ability. Um, B, uh, let's see here, it says uh, Google Keyword Finder says that Seal Beach SEO has 10 searches per month. Is this worthwhile, all that effort, or is this just for demonstration? So really we did it for demonstration. However, what I want to tell you is, in Anne's opinion, who does a lot of local, this is liquid gold and it is worth all of that effort because if somebody calls from just those 10 keywords and I own the page and they call my business, much more qualified customer. So that is, that is an opinion here. Corey, I'm not sure which category I should choose for my Facebook page. How can I determine which one is best? 
dude, welcome to the human race. We all ask that. You know, they don't have anything that says SEO, so a lot of times, you know, you choose internet. When I did my personal page, you know, it was like, am I, a, you know, it, it's, it's hard to choose. There's not a right. So I'm going to say if they don't have, like, if you sell dog food and they don't have, you know, dog products, then just, just try to find the best one. And that kind of groups you in categories. So that's my answer to that. Jenny Jackson, will there be any video training step-by-step -step for us to learn to do instead of outsourcing this? Now, Jenny, you're my kind of girl. The answer is, we just like I said up top, we're talking about the concepts of linking and every single place that you can build, a, including Google, that you can build a profile. They tell you their best practices, how to do it. They tell you shortcuts. They tell you the best way to make it happen. There's a million things that you could buy. Uh, uh, and Dory and I had a long conversation about this. You know, should we just direct them to the thing or, sh you know, like to Facebook? Or should we go get somebody who's built a million Facebook fan pages? Or should we build one ourselves? And should we show everybody? And it's like everybody's going to have a little different variance, but I'm going to tell you go to the source, go to Facebook, go to Google Plus. You'll hear secrets in of little ways that you can tweak things. And I think that when you do that, that you'll start to learn a little more. And I want to say again, that's because I'm somebody that likes to tweak and learn it. Dory is somebody that would go to Fiverr to have it done for her. There's not a right or wrong with that. Um, Benny says, if we use a P.O. box, can we create a local site with it using Greg's techniques or using a suite? So, Benny, check it out. Seal Beach SEO is a P.O. box. Google doesn't allow you to do a P.O. box. So one of the things Greg talks about and that Eric will talk about and that I talk about is if you, if you go to a place and you get a P.O. box, you do not want to get it if the P.O. box, you can't use the address and a suite number. So for me, I'm using that address and the suite number 161 because my place allows that. Now, on one of the very first Q&As I did after Dory released my course, um, we had somebody come on and say, hey, Ann, I like to live out in the boonies, and I really only have a P.O. box. What do I do? And, you know, there, there's a couple that you can go to your local friend who's on a real address and say, hey, can I say that I... Can I just say sweet A and get some mail here? Most of the time, if it's your friend, they'll say yes. But let's just say you know nobody, you live alone, you're only on the PO box. You can call Google yourself. I want to tell you I've moved to that. So that's my answer for that, Benny. Jessica, your NAP address, if it's your money site, do you try that you are trying to brand? Do you recommend using your own home address? or virtual address or P.O. box. So Jessica, here's the thing. Unfortunately, I, I started my business so long ago before they even had Google Plus. So I still, under my name, unfortunately, have more of more addresses from other places that I've had offices or places that I've lived in the past. But I will say for your NAP address, from your business license to your bank account to your Google Plus page, if you can do that, not using your and an address that you can use. Um, Andrew Hall, how did you turn a PowerPoint into a video, or did you create the slides in Photoshop Illustrator? So we just took uh, images and we wrote, we put something on top of them, and we used um, internally. Um, it was an Adobe product, but it's not. I want to immediately go to my music site, Pro Tools. It's um, not After Effects. I can't remember the name of it, but... You could easily do that in PowerPoint, though, you know, and just click, yeah. click, click. And yeah, they have different uh, transitions, so you can make it really nice. And you can export a PowerPoint to where it can be a video. But also, um, Dory, what's that program that Brad sells that, um, that you had me do a PowerPoint? Or, uh, easy, or, easy VSL. 
Yeah, Easy VSL was something that Dory had that I did a video on, and then I used on the and all those. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys saw those animations that I did at the front. You know, after Dory's tour, she asked us to do you know those animations, uh, just kind of an overview, and those were done in Powtoons, just uh, just so that you know. They're done He's, in what? Powtoons. How do you how do you spell that? Will you look it up really quick? I think it's P O W T O O N S. And uh, let's see here. Uh, and uh, Heath says, "Do you call an Amazon product link a money site? I call an Amazon product page a money site. I don't know what you mean by product link." And Aaron, what? Public blog network did you use on these? What kind of link network would you use to mash those feeds into? So when Dory asked me to do the test, she asked me, yeah, that's it right there, Powtoon. When Dory asked me to do the test, she let me test some of her tools. Uh, I gave her feedback on what needed to change, what didn't need to change, and I used, uh, we did three campaigns, and I pushed all of the links to, uh, like, uh, um, image, uh, and all social sites. So I used her public network for that. And I think we did, Dory, didn't we do like total, like maybe there's like 10 or 14 links? I mean, not a lot. Yeah, not a lot. It's uh, less is more these days. Yeah. So it, doesn't, it doesn't take a lot. Jay, why did you not take an old domain for this? Now, that's a really great question. So when you do um, uh, an aged domain, which Dory goes for all the time, especially when she's building PBN sites, and Dory does that also sometimes for money sites. Um, I wanted to take something from scratch that had no history, no anything, because her challenge to me was, can you make it rank and own as many positions as possible by the time we launch? So her and I kind of have one of those relationships where it's a little cocky talk. And so I was like, I can do that. And she goes, prove it. And so I just went and I bought a brand new domain and I did it that way. Um, an age domain, I think, in some ways might have even happened sooner. Dory, you want to address that? Um, yeah, when it's local SEO, you know, it's it's not as competitive. Um, and you, if you're going for a targeted keyword, by all means, do an exact match key. You know, it's like you cho you're choosing path B. You know, which is means you already have a branded site. You buy a age domain and do a redirect from that age domain to uh, pass the power if you needed to do that. So, and uh, I can pull up that. Uh, we I passed that um, that out last week. Well, what you do? Let's see if I can pull that up from recent. While there. you're doing that, would you would you also um, kind of talk a little bit about mashing feeds? I just think the concept. I mean, we've got so many questions here just about that piece, and um, there's so many ways. Like uh, I talked about Hootsuite, where I can can curate content, but I don't know if you have any tools for that, or what do you do? I mean, people are just uh, asking for that. You know, we we used to have a tool for, uh, for that. We actually probably still do. Um, it's an SEO Nitro. We haven't incorporated it into POE, which um, huh, we could put on the list. And what that means is that it's pulling all your feeds uh, from your social sites. You know, the things that you're posting with links to your money site or links to every, you know, embedding your your videos. And it kind of just scrambles all scrambles them all together. So it is a, a computer cr program, of course, that does that. And then it, you know, it goes into our system and it posts uh, to uh, the public blog network, which makes, you, you know, so it's like you're getting links to your profiles from from stuff that's embedded. Uh, let me go back to that slide. I can probably talk a little bit better about it. You know, uh, Roger Bryan came up with this concept. Uh, initially, and he has a service that does this. Um, that uh, uh, shoot, I think this this is what we had incorporated, but it's it's 
it's not hard to do if you have a programmer, and it's probably something that Doreen, will... people aren't going to have a programmer. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, this is the you... intermediate, advanced um, boot camp. Some people do. I, I, I realize that, you know, so that's why I, I put this slide here. It's more of an advanced slide. I wanted people to get a taste for it, you know, putting something on steroids like this. But also seeing the power that we had by not doing this. We haven't done this. This has not been done to this local site. And I would, let me go back. I wouldn't do it to this local site because it would be overkill. Uh, but some of your harder, harder stuff, you know. So you would take your RSS feeds like from YouTube, any other social site, Twitter. They all get pushed together. That's what it means by mashed. And the, into a single feed, post that feed into PR sites or a, a, a blog network, either your own or a, a public blog, blog network. And you don't post the whole string feed. You know, it goes, it, it creates different posts, like it curates it. Um, and what I say when I say by curating, it means it'll take a video, it'll take a, a, a snippet from you know Twitter and stuff like that together. This is definitely some black hat stuff. So and it's not needed for a lot of things. This is just an advanced SEO strategy. And um, in the future, I can put it on the list for us to incorporate into PoE, uh, and it would be another way we could. Um, maybe do some advanced stuff. It's not on the to-do list right now, but we do have something like this. And, yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't have shown it. <laughs> but, uh, but I wanted, you know, I, I just want to give it all out. So for well, those what, who understand it, great. And, you know, this is probably something that we will revisit in advanced linking, you know, uh, at the end of the, uh, at least, you know, not even, you know, step seven is when we get into linking, and we'll be into linking for a long time because that's what a lot of SEO is about, and come up in that advanced section when we go into linking more. Yeah, Which can is you the social you... thing I wanted to touch on it. Um, can... Will you see? Somebody is saying, um, I just want to say really quick um, to somebody saying that Justin's, see when I log in and I test, I can see Justin's course went live and somebody is saying that they're not seeing Justin's course and then another person said that. So, um, Will you just take a quick peek on the back end? Maybe, I don't know if you have another screen. Can you? I don't. Okay, so I'm just going to make a note to have that. Um... Uh, that would be weird because we released it on Tuesday. Tuesday, so and it's, it's the first I'm not time. aware of any support tickets that came in saying that yeah. they didn't see it. Me either. Andrew says he sees the course. Um, okay. Uh, Holly does, does it. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. They can see it as well. Uh, okay, so look, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna continue answering some courses stories, uh, questions, Dory. Is that okay? Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Let's see here. So DS high end to verify. Do I need to add main keywords categories in the home page to link back to those categories? DS, I need you to 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 kind of re-ask that question because I don't understand it and we'll come to it if you just I'll see that you wrote it in here and we'll answer it and Dory will you go over the inner linking Kathy would like to see it so maybe bring up Seal Beach SEO again and show that and and Kathy while she's bringing that up the Amazon super URL I would you ask will you private message me on Facebook I use a service that allows me to track that. It's it's a service that costs a fee, and then there's a way to talk about an Amazon super URL. Unless Dory, you want to go into that here? I do not want to uh, go into that here. And, and so okay, so I'm going to let you take over on talking about interlinking and Kathy PM me in Facebook, and I'll I'll hook you up, sister. Um, so it's just basically on the interlinking thing where Anne has here. We are on the about um, seal page SEO. And I'm hovering over Seal Beach, and you can see at the bottom it goes slash service dash areas 
Steel Beach. So she's linking inside her site, and Google just really likes uh, it when you link uh, to other pages in your site and you're not just linking out. So here's I'm hovering over SEO that goes to um, you know her services page. Uh, Google Maps actually goes out to Google Maps, so that's an external link, not an internal link. But social media also goes to her services page. So that's what I'm talking about with interlinking when you're linking inside of your site. Awesome. Hey, really quick, Lewis, you asked about more Q and A webinars. They're going to come up. What we, what we, it's a long story, but basically the ball was dropped, and you guys are. Um, if not tomorrow, the next day, we're we're going to be uh, starting those up again so that everybody really can get a lot of access to answering questions like it for the here and now. So just so you know, we will do that. Um, Matt, you're asking, I want to link to my Amazon product page, but I don't want my conversion rate to go the, go down. Is there a better way to do this so that you don't get traffic that doesn't convert well? You know, Matt, here's the thing. Dory talks about ranking your Amazon page on Google, not ranking your Amazon page in Amazon. So with that said, all the things and all of the th and all of the ways that she talks about that, it's to rank it in Google. Dory and I both have Amazon products and we're testing things ourselves and neither one of us have, have, have hit the gazillion dollars a month club. But I will tell you that if you follow her technique, you will rank well for Amazon in Google. And if you're, con if you're concerned about conversions to your actual page in Amazon, link to other things on your page, like your reviews and things like that that I talked about earlier. Dory, I see where you're going. You want to take some of that? Uh, you mean with gourmet olive oil? Yeah. I've been number two, number one and number two for gourmet olive oil for uh, over two years now, and I and I, I showed this on the launch. And guys, this is really why we don't expose too many things. Um, you know, now I am not even on page one for it, and that's really disappointing. Um, it could be because we're not selling it uh, on Amazon currently because we are out of it. And I can't get this to go down, but um, yeah, I've always been here, and I uh, I showed everybody on the webinars that had thousands and thousands of people on it. So I am now right here. Uh, if you go to it, we don't we're not selling it right now because, like I said, we're out of uh, we're out currently unavailable. That could be part of it. Probably not because it hasn't been available uh, for a long time, and uh, I was just number two uh, two weeks ago. So that's why we don't show too many of our own stuff. Just just for that. I mean, that kind of just bummed me out, <laughs> actually. Oh yeah, well. Well, wait but, a minute. You know, here's the thing. But you know, what we did and what I did was point to my URL using this, and I have I consistently was a number one, number two at bounce for my money keyword uh, before I announced it publicly. Uh, here's a question. Uh, please explain the difference between a private blog network, which um, he understands, and a public blog network. A private blog network, of course, is one that you build and you control, and they're only linking out to your stuff. A blog network is like something that I have built and that everybody in POE gets access to. So it's public. I mean, you could say it's private. It's private to the POE membership, but there's going to be, you know, it's going to be used much more than a private blog network would be. So if you had, you know, your private blog network, you would only link out to your sites, and so the protection—it's just a, it's a whole different animal. Um, public blog networks are traditionally hard to uh, keep under wraps. That's why we don't link them to our money sites anymore, uh, because if they do, you know, if Google does find them, and they usually do, it, it's not going to harm, you know, your main site. Now my um, 
thought process on that, and I've proved that anytime Google a, a private or public blog network or any site that's linking to your site, it has never, in any, in all my experience over the years, has never harmed the ranking. Now, what did harm rankings, and especially back in 2012, was the exact match domains that uh, exact match keywords everyone was using. So we finally figured that out, but you know a lot of people took a lot of heat that had public blog blog networks, uh, me being one of them. But it really wasn't that. It was the exact match that linking over and over and over again using gourmet olive oil, gourmet olive oil, gourmet. You know, if I was doing that, which I didn't do to my Amazon page, and that's why uh, it was ranking so well. Um, until somebody okay, probably so, just reported it, but uh, yeah, somebody uh, probably did because you've been so transparent. So DS, you responded. I'm just going to say it, it's you're saying we have a homepage in categories. These categories, do I need to enter on the content of my homepage as my main keywords? So if I have five categories, do I need to enter those categories as my main keywords? So here's the thing. In a WordPress site, you can do that for categories. But Google usually, you would have a category, for example, that would say your domain forward slash olive oil. And then under olive oil as the category would be the types would be ranking an internal page. With that said, on your home page, if you're really wanting to rank for five keywords, I do the interlinking that Dory just showed, how I link to, to my other pages by, I, I mean on the local I just chose other cities, but you might say, let's say your category, let's say you're, you're about fruit and you want to link to apples, oranges, bananas, and grapes. Those are your categories. You can very easily say, you know, our fruit site rocks and not only does our fruit site rock, we have the best tasting, colorful, delicious fruit. If you're interested in, in apples, we get them from here, there, and the other place, and apples can link to that category. So for best practice, I would answer that yes, DS. Um, I'm going to kind of hit some more. Um, uh, let's see here. Adam, there are many high search keywords for my Amazon product. Does that does it mean that if I want to rank for more of them, I need to make more example for Facebook pages and each of them having exact keyword match? I say that. I would say I would use Dory's example and I would choose one keyword that you think converts the best. I would try to rank for that keyword on Google. So. SJ says, I'm attempting to rank a local site and I'm having a hard time getting a local address for Google+. What do you suggest for people residing outside of the United States? You know, if you're in Canada, Germany's.de, you know, I would say, are you wanting to rank for that Google Plus page in the U.S., SJ? Because if you're wanting to rank for something local, you would want to, if it's a .co.uk, that's where you would want that to be. Uh, Thelma, what are public blog networks? This is an advanced intermediate course, but in essence, it's a way to set up linking. And so um, we're going to have to kind of come back to that. Um, Myra, Ann, I need to contact you directly because I cannot replay your videos. Um, I am slow in this and need to watch your videos slowly, but I can't watch them, the videos in setting up and all. So, Myra, please put in a support ticket. Let them know that you're on the webinar, and I want to know if there's a problem with delivering them slowly or if there's a problem with you going back and watching them. Whatever that is, let me know, and we will try and fix that within POE. If not, Hit me up privately and we'll, we'll figure something out. George, Dory, this is for you. Could Google penalize public blog network links to social profiles sometime in the future? Now, here it goes back to when I say that didn't really reflect our rankings. Uh, it was the exact match keyword. 
that we were doing. And could Google do anything that they want in the future? Absolutely. Um, that's why it, I have always said, and I've said this since 2007, that it, the best link you can have is the one that you control. So if anything happens, you can make those changes and make those changes really quickly, which is where uh, our link management tool will help you out with. Um, before I go to the next question, Andrew, I will not say this publicly exactly what you said, but um, in, in essence, you know, I think that some of the reasons why Dory has disappeared a little bit, although I see you right now, Dor, is that I think sometimes um, we're trying to be as specific as possible and transparent, and as we're teaching and as we're talking you about, to you about things, we know that Google may come in and look at it and take down Dory's thing. That's how come when I built Seal Beach SEO, I was very clear, everything follows Google all the way down. I don't link to it from a public blog network. I do not, I have analytics, Google Webmaster Tools. So I really believe in teaching all of those things from the most white hat approach. But everybody who wants to get ahead wants to know what their options are and what the risk management is. And so even if Google is taking notes on any of our things, I think that we have been very in what those things are. Don't you agree, Dor? Yeah, I agree. You know, it depends on your uh, risk, uh, your, your um, tolerance. You know, I have a very high risk tolerance because I know I can go out and do something right, you know, right again. But other people, like if you're, you have a client that is a major, you know, white hat thing, you wouldn't that I show you. But some of the tactics that I bank something really quickly and you might make, a, you know, a bucket load of money for a couple months on. So it's, it's all about risk management, like you were saying, Anna, and what path you want to take. So this is, these are step by steps, and and Anne is really the white hat of the two of us, and I am the black hat of the two of us. I like my risk tolerance is way higher than hers. Everything that she's shown you and that that she has done, both pr best practices and how she ranked that site for SEO, uh, Steel Beach SEO. Hey, um, just just for a real quick. Um, reference door. Will you show how to get all the operators in Google since you've got it up? Uh, I have a PDF on that. That's for Benny. Uh, I yeah. saw that. Um, let me see if I can do a fast search and find that and put it in the handouts. Uh, okay. And if you do find it, let's get it to support and we'll put it up, you know, on the site too. Um, Sarah, you're asking, can you create affiliate links on a free WordPress blog site? Yeah, you can, you can put anything on a free WordPress blog site. Just think of it as every single time you do a post and you're going to link and you link to a, an affiliate site or you link to, a, to, a, uh, um, to an authority site, the question is, do you get traffic to your uh, free WordPress blog site? And if you do, I mean, you're pushing links to that, absolutely. Um, Matt, is it okay to link to a PBN direct? Is it okay to link from a PBN directly to your Amazon URL? So we've talked about this quite a bit. I mean, that's how Dory did it. You know, I have an Amazon uh, page, and I don't do that. But I also have a website, and I have social for my product, and I link to there from a public PBN. But on a private PBN, I would link directly to my Amazon URL. Um, Sarah? I would link directly from a public blog network to my Amazon URL. I know. That's how you got there. I know you um, were. Yeah, because Amazon and Facebook and YouTube, they can take that. They can, you know, it's, it's they're so big. Uh, but, yeah, if you, uh, if you do your... Um, your competition analysis, and you know that you only need three links. Well, then just get them from your private, you know, sites that you've purchased as a PBN. Um, you know, Sarah, I, uh, go ahead. Sorry, Dor. I was just saying how you know uh, Apple has changed their search. And I swear to gosh, I have a hard time finding files now. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe someone can give me a demo on that. 
Because um, I know I have like 100 cheat sheets, and I, I put in cheat, you know, for a file name, and it just doesn't freaking come up. I'm finding, I'm trying to look for that operator process map. Okay. Um, so, Sarah, congratulations to your brother hiring you to do SEO for his business, and I also love your domain name. However, you're asking how to come up with deliverables and to create a timeline. Erock and I go over that a lot in the um, in his course. I always let people know that your your deliverables when you have an SEO business are to show that you say that you're going to do it and you do it. The results in Google that's a timeline you can never give. So like when Dory was when Dory gave me that challenge, can I rank for this? You know, um, like somebody asked before, look, you get 10, 10 keyword searches. Look, you, you know, your brother's got a factory, so you look for um, a word like I don't know, just best factory in best factory for microphones in my city, just as an example. I mean, the thing that you have to consider if that's what happens nobody's going to really search for that unless they're in that city and doing that. So you've got to start with low-hanging fruit and you've got to come up with a plan. And the timeline will always be how Google indexes it. So that's my answer to that. Um, Gary, <laughs> Dory, listen to this question. Can this strategy alone rank a page from your authority site for launch jacking? <laughs> See, see, Dory's got this bet going with Jeff, and I know you, Dory. You haven't even started it. Have you started it? I haven't it? even started it yet, but yes, this absolutely could. Uh, and uh, yes, I will absolutely use this strategy when Jeff and I go toe to toe. And, and you know, Jeff told me that some people that have already taken his course have already made money. I know. It's crazy. I love it. I absolutely love it. Dory, go C-H-E-A-T. When you're no, here it is. I found it. Uh, okay. Can you buy links from Fiverr to point to your YouTube, etc.? I do. I don't. So it depends on your risk tolerance on how you know. Would you do it? Would, would I do it to a client? Probably not. Would I do it? Um, you know. So on my site, because I can redo them, yeah. Especially, if, especially for like launch jacking, which is, you know, it's a wham bam, slam, uh, thank you, ma'am type of thing. Um, there's a lot of things like that. That's where you could, because it yeah. takes Google a while. You know, even affiliate SEO, you can rank for some really heavy keywords by doing a lot of this stuff and doing it quickly, doing it black hat, will those sites last forever? No, they don't, but they can last three to six months and that can make you a buttload of money. Um, Sarah, the difference between a PBN site and a money site, so when we use the term money site, that would be like um, your brother's actual business is his money site. Address but says you cannot use the PO box as a suite, or you can get a font too. Where where I live, there's a an actual place to get a PO box in our post office, and we don't do that either. That's a come where I did mine is I went to a real place that I really could do that so that I follow Google guidelines. That I can say that it's a suite, and I have a client that owns his building but it's one address and so it, there's another entrance and he just put something on the door and he said suite A so just so you know that Kathy I have lots of old domains Dory listen to this but have never added content will Google treat these as an aged domain you want to hit that um, 
I believe it will if you're if they're using the WHOAS database. And you know, a lot of people will argue with me on that and say, no, it needs to have content on it. At least you should have had an indexed page, you know, one index page. Um, I've never tested that. I've never actually myself done a test, and I don't know anybody else who has. So it's kind of like one of those theoretical questions that we can argue about. I feel like it's better than a new site, um, and it's not been tested. So um, we're coming. Ah, somebody to... said I was spelling cheat wrong. <laughs> well, you were. You were spelling it C. -E. So I'm going to encourage you to go watch what Dory did on her. It's already up there because she goes through an exact process of how she would do that, what her minimums are. Um, and just because we only have a few minutes left, uh, we're already 26 minutes over. So go watch her video. She goes through that very clearly. Um, Ginny WordPress, how does the setup go? So, so Ginny, you these and no. Yes, you have to set up a new uh, WordPress site and you do that, but you need to be careful on where you host it. That again is an advanced technique. If you're going to build an old site to make it a money site, that's topic one. If you're going to start buying age domains to build a private blog network, Wait until you see all the advanced stuff. Dory, wouldn't you agree? Uh, well, I think that they could start buying the age domains for a public blog network. I mean, private blog network. Just wait till uh, we get to that, so they know how to set it up properly. And here is a question about that. Can't well something about private. Uh, um, can you link from a private which uses the same IP host? So that is actually exactly with our private blog networks. You want them to be on a separate IP, a separate host. Um, uh, I use cloak hosting. A lot of people do because it, it's one dashboard and it kind of and it does that. But here's the thing: you could get away with a couple sites from the same IP, same host. Is one you know Google is okay with you linking to sites that you own. That seems like to be natural. And a really good example of that is web.com has a, a couple, like they have seven really high profile sites. One shopping cart being one of them. Checked. You would see links from that, from their footer to their other uh, visual. Web properties now kind of like a link wheel. Google's like, okay, you know, five or six, seven sites that that's that's cool. We know that they own them, so you could get to, to draw that kind of attention to you. But basically, in the best practices, that we do not link to our money site from the same IP or host from a blog network. Yeah, and with that, Kathy, thanks for doing the test. That'll be great. Please let Dory and I uh, to say that, and thank you for saying this is the best course you've ever taken. That always makes us feel good. And Sarah, you've not started a PBN. I'm not going to say what the name is. I see what your intention is, and I love every single thing that you're going to do, but that's a money site. Do not link to that from a public blog network. That is not a PBN. A PBN. Dory has 500 network. 
I just want to be really clear. It's public because we're going to have 500 people linking to from it, you know, so it's not just you. A private blog network is something that only you are linking from. So your uh, the content, everything. And there's, you know, there's, there's different ways that you can make them, you know, that you only set up five or ten of them. Um, and you can have them built. Uh, expensive for me to do that. And, and it, I've already spent $50,000 on a 500 site network and, and yeah. But if you're doing 10 of them, yeah, I've put the time into doing something, you know, like I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, Nathan hey. has a gray hat question. Would you recommend creating multiple social media profiles, Facebook, Tumblr, Blogger, et cetera, and have them link to your money site? Absolutely. That's just what we're showing you to do. Uh, these are social profiles. You can also do Web 2.0 properties, things like that. And you know, you can create them and make them buffer sites. Now, since 2012, we've created you know the, the you know the, the, I came out with the blog buffer network where where we're, it, we're, we create you a a blog network but it's only yours and you use that as a buffer site. So these like YouTube, Facebook, and Google right on here. That's those are like buffer sites right now. You can link your pl public blog networks to them uh, and use the exact match terms right now. Could that change? Absolutely, it could change. Like, you know, nobody can guarantee you that that it won't change. But right now, that works. It has for the last uh, three years. So, so yeah, uh, you can link those to your money site and then use public blog networks. But typically, you know, you can get links cheaper that way than creating them. And, and you, uh, you, you know, you create your private blog network now. That would be a tier one site. That would be something that you would link to your money site because you know it's a safe site hosted somewhere else. You put the content on it. Uh, uh, it's, it's absolutely one. And the other person pretty much worth their salt has one in their arsenal. Yeah, Colin, I just I just want to say to you that, you know, um, I don't know the status of that. Do you mind putting that, sending that to me privately or putting that in a support ticket? I need to talk to Dory about that offline, and I promise you I will get an answer to you. Um, Sal, I just want to tell you, um, Dory asked me to, to test a plug-in. Sal is saying that he bought an H domain after last week's webinar, which is nine years old and has a majestic trust of 19 in his niche for 30 bucks. Wow, awesome, congratulations. Now set up your profiles for that. Which is the homework for everybody. You should have bought a dom uh, oh, age domain last week, and now I want you to set up the profiles for it. And Sal, I want to tell you that Dory, she she wanted to test a plugin, so she asked me to put something on a site that no way could it rank. So I had an old site, and I think she might have even talked about it, that had been hacked, and it had been hacked, and I just didn't touch it for probably two years, and I put all of the plugins she wanted me to test on it. And it's called Golf Pro Strategies. And I want to tell you that because it's ranking um, on page one for two really strong terms. So let me know once you get that up. And if it's good, write me an article and I'll put it on there and I'll link to your, to your site. Just so I just want to give that to you just because it's in the same niche. Okay, Nathan and, wanted to clarify creating multiple Tumblr accounts, multiple blogger accounts, etc. I would not uh, create multiples and multiples and, and use only those uh, linking to your money site. A couple of them, yeah, not. Uh, Aaron says, I heard every time you log into the WordPress admin, it sends your IP to Google because WordPress automatically comes with Google Web Fonts installed. One of these fonts for your admin area. Is this true? If so, is logging in behind a way around this? I have never heard this, actually. So if it is true, you got one on me. I've never, uh, I've never heard that, um, ever. But, but I just want to say it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you've got a quality site that you're putting analytics on and you've got Google Fonts and you're doing that, who cares? That's a real site. If you're in a 
public blog network that is, let's just say, spammy sites that are all crap, you know, that people are just going to go in there and abuse, they're going to be up for six months. You know, Google's going to know that. You're not linking to your money site from those things anyway. You know, you could say that that's your competitor linking to that. So I wouldn't trip about that at all. Yeah. I don't. I've never heard of it, but I wouldn't trip about that. Yeah. Jessica says when. Uh, so when I'm blogging and I comment on a friend's blog, is this considered a public blog network? And should I submit my link in a comment from my money site? Oh, Jessica, that is not a public blog network because you're not going to have a hundred SEOs posting two different types of sites from it. It's your friend's site. Go ahead and comment. Put a link back to your site. Totally okay. Okay, um, Dory, we we need to um, start to wind this down. Okay, yeah. And and Kathy, you're asking what's my face. these social profiles around those 10 sites and then links to those sites from you know my public blog network that you're going to have access to very soon that would make your 10 sites so incredibly powerful that that you could do a lot of damage with so just saying that uh, so so do this with your money site and you can do it with your PBNs, and uh, we'll get into that when we start building um, PBNs. And so, remember, your I want to encourage everybody though to you know keep looking for your money, uh, keep looking in, for old domains, uh, buy them. In, you know, if you want to buy one for your money site, uh, for any of the uh, types of business models that the experts have shown you, I know I'm. All that. I also want to encourage you guys to, to keep um, asking questions in the Facebook group. That's been really, really active, and um, I've been enjoying it too. I try to get in there at least once a day to answer questions. Sometimes it's tough for me because I got a lot of administration duties around um, all of this, but I do try to get in there. And the experts and coaches are always in there to answer your questions. So I think with that, do you 